Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential and maybe logarithmic system, a really nice system from Romania. I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. So we have log x plus log y equals 2 and 2 to the power log x times 3 to the power log y equals square root of 54. So we're going to be looking for x and y values. So for my first method, I'm going to isolate log y and write it as 2 minus log x. By the way, log means base 10 here. And then we're going to substitute this into the second equation. Notice that we have 3 to the power log y here. So we're going to replace that with 2 minus log x. So that gives us 2 to the power log x times 3 to the power 2 minus log x equals square root of 54. Great. Let's go ahead and arrange this a little bit. I can write this as 2 to the power log x times 3 to the second divided by 3 to the power log x. So about 3 to the second power can be written as 9. And we can just write this in the denominator because the exponent is negative. All right, great. Now, what about the right-hand side? Let's just uh, write it as square root of 54 for now, and then I'll arrange this in a little bit. Now, notice that here we have 2 to the power log x divided by 3 to the power log x. So those two expressions have the same exponent. Therefore, we can just write them together like this, 2 over 3 to the power log x. So we can write them with the same exponent, and we can just divide the bases. This is multiplied by 9, but we can go ahead and divide both sides by 9, and that's going to give us square root of 54 divided by 9. And don't do these mistakes. You know, sometimes people make these mistakes. So suppose you have something like this. 9 goes into 54 6 times, and let's go ahead and cancel this out. And this gives us square root of 6, which is not correct. You can't do it because 9 is not under the radical. Okay. Anyways, so from here, we're going to be solving for log x, and you can basically do, um, you know, you can log both sides, so on and so forth, but let's go ahead and simplify the right-hand side first. Maybe there's going to be an easier way to do it. So I can go ahead and take the square root of 54, and notice that there is a 9 at the bottom, so I can go ahead and write the square root of 54 as square root of 9 times square root of 54. And I know the square root of 9 is uh, 3, but let's just leave it at that. And then the 9 can also be written as square root of 9 times square root of 9. Great. Now we can go ahead and cancel out square root of 9 here, and our expression is going to be a little simpler. Right? Okay. Oops. I was supposed to write 6 here, not 54. Okay, that's like, there's something wrong with this. Okay. So now we, we got square root of 6 divided by square root of 9. And definitely we can write this as the square root of 6 over 9, which can be simplified to square root of 2 thirds. Now look at the first expression, look at the last one, and if you compare those two directly, you're going to notice that we can find log x from here. The square root of 2 thirds can be written as, can be written as 2 thirds to the power 1 half. As you know, we can write a radical using uh, fractional exponents, and this is how you do with square roots. So from here, since the bases are the same, we can safely say that log x is equal to 1 half. And that indicates that x is equal to, since the base is 10 here, even though it's not written, you can always write it if you want. And by using the definition of logs, you can safely say that x equals 10 to the power 1 half, which means square root of 10. And of course, when you plug in log x into the first equation, which uh, tells us log x plus log y is equal to 2, or you can also use this one, log y is equal to 2 minus log x, so log y is going to be 2 minus 1 half, which is 3 halves. And again, by using the definition, since the base is 10, y becomes 10 to the power 3 halves, and you can basically write it as either the square root of 10 to the third, or the square root of 10 times 100, and that becomes 10 root 10. So y becomes 10 times the square root of 10 from here. Basically, there's only one pair of solutions, and this is it. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method. 
Now, one caveat about the second method, our second method doesn't always work nicely. Uh, in this case, it did, and I'll tell you why, but it's worth checking. You know, sometimes uh, there are certain shortcuts that don't work all the time, but it's always worth uh, giving it a try. All right, so here's how the second method goes. For my second method, I know we're not necessarily looking for integers here, but uh, this fact just helps us real quick. So 2 to the power log x multiplied by 3 to the power log y. I'm starting with the second equation, and that is equal to square root of 54, right? So now I want to break down the 54 into two factors such that even though we have a radical, I want to break it down into two factors such that one of the factors is a power of 2 and the other one is a power of 3. And this can be done because 54 is 2 times 27. Awesome. Let's go ahead and do it. So we can now replace square root of 54 with square root of 2 times square root of 27. And as you know, and we've just done this, Square root of 2 can be written as 2 to the power 1 half. And this can be written as square root of 3 to the third. So we can write it as 3 to the power 3 halves. If you didn't see that right away, uh, you can just use the definition of, you know, square root of x when x is positive. You, x, this can be written as x to the power 1 half. Square root of 27 can be written as 27 to the power 1 half. But 27 is 3 to the third. So we can write it as 3 to the third to the power 1 half, which turns out to be 3 to the power 3 halves. So if you, if you can't do it right away, don't worry about it. It's perfectly fine. You can do it in steps. So that's what it is. Now, let's go ahead and compare the left-hand side and the right-hand side and see what this means. So I have a product of a power and a power of 3 on both sides. So would it be safe to say, I know we're not looking for, you know, the rational solutions, I guess I should say not integers, but rational solutions. But like I said earlier, it's worth checking. So would it be okay if I just assume that log x is equal to one half and log y is equal to three halves? It definitely satisfies the equation, but does it, that is, does it satisfy the system? And we got, we got to check the other equation. So here's what it is, right? Log x plus log y is equal to 2. And as you can see here, 1 half plus 3 halves is equal to 2. Therefore, the first equation of our system is also satisfied, which means this solution works, or this method works in general. Not in general, but I should say in this case, since it satisfied both of the equations. So from here, we get the same thing, log x equals 1 half, which means x equals square root of 10, and y equals 10 times the square root of 10. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.